Hi guys, it's me Karen from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a quick little preview of a design we're going to work on today. Um, as promised, we'll talk about this. But first, I want to review just some of the stuff, supplies that you'll need. A couple or at least one dedicated plier because they'll get all nasty and they will not stay nice and clean like your other ones. So be sure that you don't mind that they're gonna get nasty. You will need, of course, always start with clean hands and clean your stones, whatever you're gonna be using, whether it's ceramic or metal or whatever. Clean them as well with some alcohol. I always have an N95, but uh, these days, and I'll show you if I can, that I now have an exhaust system because I'm also um, doing torch firing. So I had to develop this uh, exhaust system for safety features. So I have that but I didn't used to. <laughs> so all you'll need is to be in a nice open air or nice open air area. Maybe have your ceiling fan going. You can get a smaller fan that will pull the fumes away from you. If you notice that that's happening near your face a lot, you can wear a mask. Yes, you can wear a respirator too. I don't do well with those kinds of things because I get a little claustrophobic. I wear glasses so things get steamed up. But um, you'll need your soldering iron and this is my wonderful Heiko FX601. We'll be on a setting to start of 360. I don't have it plugged in yet. Um, I use liquid flux. And I just put a little bit in a bowl with my brush. I use Silver Gleam when I want to keep my pieces nice and shiny. If I'm going to patina them, I'll use a different brand that's way less expensive. So that choice is yours. Of course, our copper foil tape. You can get different sizes and whatnot. Um, let's see. Of course something to clean your um, tip and keep it cleaned regularly like after you set it down and you do something else before you use it again clean it off whether it's this or a sponge or wet paper towel whatever your choice is whatever works best for you and then for this project of course i like to have some scissors around um, and so an X-Acto knife if I'm going to clean the backs up or wherever I might have gone over the edge with the tape. I know a lot of people don't like that I incorporate a washcloth, but I don't. Uh, there's no fire risk here. I just use it sometimes to hold my piece down like this. And the iron's over here, so there's no danger so no worries um let's see different wire if you're gonna like on this project we're gonna be using some small gauged pure copper wire you can do a 26 gauge you can get this at the hardware store this is 24 gauge and it's just bare copper wire it's about six bucks for a lot <laughs> hundred feet um, you can get different size gauges for different projects. Of course, as I do it more, I'm getting more. Um, this is an 18 gauge. This is a real popular size for making frames and whatnot. Um, you can also buy what's called tinned copper. 
So these are tinned at a factory. This is a 16 gauge, whereas this is the bare copper on tin that you tin it yourself, unless you want to keep it copper. Um, why I got, oh, and here's a 16 gauge, so it's much thicker. I use this one a lot to make a bale because it's good and strong. Um, why I started experimenting with this was I didn't like how my tinning looked. It was rough and um, points on it, and then I'd have to file it, and then the copper would show through and yada yada. So I experimented with these, and this can make life a lot easier. So and again, most of my stuff I've purchased off of Amazon. Um, I, I'm not an affiliate yet, so I don't have the specific links to it. If I do try to put the links up, they're like a paragraph long. So, so I haven't done that yet. Anyway, I think that's the basics. Did I say we'll need the, uh, yes, I did, the liquid flux. Um, and then, of course, if you have any little beads or these are little flower charms. Little, little birds. Um different types of stuff, whatever you got in your stash. Usually any alloy metal will work. You might have to mess with it more than you would think. Oh, cute, look at that, a little four leaf clover. There's always stuff in here I forget about. So yeah, go digging. All right, let's get started. Before we get started, I'd like to give my shout outs to Kirsten. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the cup of coffee. I really enjoy this. Um, also, a big shout out to my very first paid monthly member, Mixed Media Art Girl. Thank you, thank you. And I will take a moment to um, just review what you will get. I really only have the first tier going right now, and it's $5 a month. And, of course, I'll do the shout-outs, and um, you'll be automatically registered for my quarterly giveaways, which includes either a piece of jewelry or some stones, cabochons, or a little kit. I don't know. It's going to vary. Um, it'll also include a 5% discount from any purchases on my store that is now connected to Buy Me a Coffee. So if you want to go check that out, I only have a few pieces listed so far. Um, you'll also be included in, invited to participate in some polls I'll be doing for future design ideas for new projects. So I want like to co-create with you guys. Um, also right now, uh, the only video I'm offering is a monthly crystal discussion in a series called, Did You Know? And I did just a little preview of that. The stone this month is Labradorite. So you can check out the little preview video if you'd be interested, but the um, one you'll be getting for your membership is, I think the video was probably about almost 20 minutes long. So I go in depth, I show you projects I've made with the stone. I um, show you my stash that I have with the stones. So yeah, I get a little carried away in those, but it's fun, it's fun. And I'll be adding to this stuff. I, I'm, you know, looking for your suggestions too. I'm thinking about uh, having a discussion about how I found some local shops that uh, I now have my jewelry in um, and how you can search and, and figure out how to do it and how to best approach people like that. I'd like to share that. 
Other projects I could do um, is how I created like all my business cards and my like my theme of my my um, flyers and you know information cards and business cards and all that good stuff. Um, there's a lot to it, I guess. There's a lot of things I could help you guys with, for sure. So that's just some of the stuff that, the perks, they call it, um, for being a member. And um, I'd like to do Zooms or live classes, like creating together, but I don't know how to do that yet. Um, so any ideas, suggestions are always welcome. And if you haven't gotten involved and, um, left your comment, I have a current giveaway happening right now that will end on the 31st and the winner will be announced on February 1st. So if you haven't checked that out, go look at that little short video called the giveaway, a thank you giveaway, I think is what it's called. So anyway, thank you guys to Kirsten and Mixed is what I'm calling this gal. She's um, into mixed media and that's, that's what I love to do as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, on to the project. Today I picked this um, beautiful, it's a hemimorphite, I think it's called. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it um, looks very similar to a Laramar. Um, it can be have a little bit darker blue and stuff, but they kind of call it what people try to pass off as Laramar sometimes. Um, there's a na other name for it. Not, not faux Laramar, but geez, I can't remember what it's called. But it's Hemi... H-E-M-I Morphite. And um, that's what I'm going to use today. And I thought I would just maybe sketch something out. You guys know if you've been following me at all. I don't typically do that. But I thought, why not? I'll give it a shot and see how close I can, <laughs> how close I can come to this design. But I wasn't sure at first was whether I was going to use it in this orientation or this orientation. So um, this is the first one I did, and I thought, okay, I like that. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing just a basic beginners uh, tutorial, and then I thought I'd do a tree of life. So those are just a couple of projects coming up. But this is what we're gonna work on today. So I've already cleaned my stone, and now I'm gonna go ahead and select which tape I want to use. And that's kind of your choice. I think this size will be fine. And I'm not going to take up a whole lot of room with this, so you get it, right? You measure it around, you leave a little, like a, you know, less than a half inch overlay, and then you can um, put, apply the tape and burnish it down and we'll get ready. I forgot to mention something to burnish your copper tape down. You can use a popsicle stick. There's lots of different burnishers. There are agate burnishers. There's, you can use your fingernails or cuticle stick or something that won't hurt your stone if you slip, right? So nothing sharp, like a knife. Um, and then I don't know if you guys have seen any of my other videos, but I always use an X-Acto knife to kind of uh, cut some corners and stuff. It just helps the tape lay down a little bit better and not have so much overlapping, but that's just me.
And for me, I think the burnishing, the application and then burnishing of the tape is probably the single most important um, part of it because after all, that's what's holding everything on. And um, if you can get it as smooth as possible, right? Of course, nothing's gonna be perfect, but um, I just try to feel it. And if I feel anything kind of sticking up, I'll burnish it again. Um, yeah. Okay, let's get this puppy soldered. While that's cooling, I went ahead and cut off, oh, 12 to 14 inches of the uh, 24 gauge bare copper wire to get started. I find the center and I'm just going to tack that Somewhere on the top. I'm not sure how much I'll need. It's probably going to be more than enough. But just a quick little tack solder. Let's see if I can show you. Is all you need right now. Because now we're going to play with how these things are going to go on there, if they're going to look right, and all that good stuff. So let's see what we can do. Let that cool off a little bit before you go handling it. Because this is the design phase that you're just going to put some things on and move them around and see if it'll work before you jump right in there and start soldering stuff down. Okay? Okay. Okay, after the piece cooled off and I tacked it just at one spot, you can tack it wherever you want, but I tacked it up at the top because I wanted to see if I could get this little bird on here. And I kind of like that idea right there. I may do some different stuff as I go along, but I think I'm going to start with this. What do you guys think? Because you know me, I'm kind of a more simplistic design person. I don't like it all, you know, scrunch. You can add two or even take away and just add one little element. But I like this idea. I want to showcase the stone more than anything, but I like how this looks. So I'm going to attempt first to get that bird on there. And so I'm gonna take these off knowing that they'll come back on later. And um, we'll see how this goes. Let me get my trusty washcloth. Now inside looks pretty good. You won't really see the wire. 
I'm going to go ahead and tack Let me move this out of my way a little bit. Sorry if I'm mumbling today. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking. Um, let's see. I'll give it a little flux. And because, again, I'm just going to... That's kind of how I want it, right there. And it might be harder than it looks because I want it to stay tight. I don't want that bird flapping around, which means I may have to turn it somewhat. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I can always take it off. So always clean your tip because it's already oxidized. It can start oxidizing instantly. And if you're ever having trouble getting a bit of solder to stick to your tip, first try cleaning it. Okay, so we got that on there. But you can see a little bit of that copper and I don't know let's see if I can come at it a different direction and just cover that copper up a little bit now I might lose some yeah see that bird's already stuck so that alloy metal alloy is that's interesting um accepting the solder just on its own without this um so i don't really want to get too much on here just kind of want to tin that little bit of copper and I probably should have done that. Beforehand, but I wasn't sure. Okay, I'm happy with that. So that wire's kind of hidden. Sweet. All right, moving on. Let's see, let's do this side. So I'm just gonna kind of feed this along here and tack that right into the frame as we go. So I could assist it there a little by holding it. And I don't, I just want to get around that curve because then I want to add the um, little flower on. So cleaning my tip again, picking up just a little solder. I don't want too much and just tap it. Don't try to drag it. When you drag it, that's when you get kind of a uh, lumpiness and stuff. I've discovered if you just kind of hover it'll be much smoother. That's how those stained glass artists get those nice rounded edges. They're just tapping. Okay, so that's all I did. You can't even tell there's a wire there, really. And let that cool a minute. And we'll feed this little flower charm on. And I could, um, you know, I could do a little swirl here, and but you'd want to tin it. You know, something like that. And put the flower down here. Let's see what that looks like.
Mm, I think I'll wait on that. And just get this flower. See if this is the right spot I wanted it. And I wanted it a little bit lower, I think. So let me tack another few millimeters on. Clean my tip. My tip is precious to me. I hear these people that burn their tips out in um, a matter of weeks or months, and uh, I've never had that happen. So I don't know if it's just me or, or what. Okay, I think I like that position. And I do not have my exhaust fan on because it would be too loud right now. Okay, let's see. I want this to lay. So I'm going to bend that wire a little bit. Such as this. And when you're working like this in small increments, like this stone is not that hot right now. So let's see, yeah, I like that. So I try to grab that little charm as well and hold that down so it doesn't go moving. Okay, clean my tip. Because that's what keeps it nice and shiny and receptive to the solder. Just a little bit, that's almost too much. Again, I can see a little copper down in there. There we go. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so I'm going to go around and just keep doing what I'm doing. If I just don't want anything there, I'm just going to tack the wire down into the frame like this. Right? And if I get down here, I may do um, something like that. And then I can tin. Here, I'll show you. And I'm gonna work on getting that not to move. Wiggle. So clean my tip. Pick up just a little solder. If in doubt, put more flux. Clean your tip again, that quick. So something like that, see that's not moving anymore. And let's see, do we want to do a little swirl down here? Let's make it a little bigger. Kind of want it sweeping. Like that.
I'm gonna tack that down right at the point. Cleaning my tip before I pick the solder up. And just a little bit. Yeah, you can use smaller tips too. Okay, let's see what that looks like before we go any further. Let's go ahead and tin this wire going across here and maybe add a couple little decorative dots or something. Let's see what we can do. I don't want a lot of a lot of solder. See how just running your iron over the wire kind of um, tins it. That's all tinning means. That's what you do to your tip when you're shutting it down at night or when it looks, you know, nasty. You'll clean it and then tin it with solder or whatever. Get a little bit more solder on here. Adding a couple of little dots. Pick this up. Because one thing you gotta remember is depending on how kind of you're applying your solder, if gravity plays a part. <laughs> That's all I can say, is you'll hit it and it'll be like, oh, what happened there? Well, well, gravity drew it down. So you have to be mindful. If I want a couple of dots here, I want gravity to help me. And use the, the side of your tip. And just do a little, barely touch it. And this is when you can play with your heat. Right? Maybe you will turn this down a tad. We'll apply some more flux. Never be afraid of flux. And I like the liquid because you can see it's I don't know if you've noticed, there really hasn't been any puffs of smoke. It's not greasy. You can build on top of the dots. So start with just small little dots okay cool I'm happy with that so I'm gonna leave this end here now and go with this one because this is where I want the butterfly to come into play now, yeah I could probably just put the butterfly on this and continue up maybe I should and just cut that baby off there See what I mean? It was way too much more than I needed, but that's okay. I could just do some more swirls because I really like that with the little, I think that looks cute. So let's see, let me see which will fit better. Oops, I'm sorry. We've got this. So I want this to hug this, or I could do something like this up here 
right? And then add the butterfly on here. Cute, yes, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that in place, apply my flux, clean my tip. It's almost like a ritual, right? Get just a little bit of solder. You can always add more, but it's a lot harder to take it off, I'll tell you that. And just do tapping. Get this little butterfly out of the way. Now I did turn the heat down to do those decorative dots. So I may have to turn it back up. Let's see. No, nope, it's okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and tin tin this and hold that down. Do I want it sticking out that far? I think I like that there. I'm gonna go ahead, oops, I'm sorry, and tack this side down right now. Bring my tip again. Get just a little dab. And I'm going to tin this. That simple. And let me do the butterfly. I can go back and do <clears throat> the little dots. Let's see. Feed this on here. I kind of want it to go up like this. Let's see what it'll look like. Not using that piece, but using this piece, because I want it to kind of face up. Could actually, oh. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use this wire <clears throat> because it's facing the, you know, it makes this uh, butterfly face the right way. But I want it up a little bit further, so I'm gonna tack. this down here. I don't know if you guys can see. That's going to be cute, you guys. Clean my tip. decorate this here and see what this looks like and then I can maybe cut that off more flux and see that butterfly isn't solid yet but I will get them I'll get them <laughs> clean my tip and 
some more solder. Sorry if this is gonna be long, but I am showing you every little detail. Okay, I hope I didn't get too much, but let's see. And barely tapping that. More flux. Of course, that's not going to stick because it's not attached to anything. Oh, and with these, um, with these little copper wire things, you can occasionally take them out, scruff them up um, to loosen any bits, and you'll be surprised how many bits of copper are down in there. So you can clean them out from time to time. And... Um, you know, pull them apart a little bit so there's more room for it to do its job as far as offering a spot to clean. Okay, I'm just going to continue with this here. I think I'm going to end this right here with the butterfly because I kind of want him facing the bird. So I'm going to attach this over here. That's why I apologize because you're probably going, how the world in the world is she holding on to that stone? It's because it cooled in the last 10 minutes. Okay, I want this pretty tight so... He doesn't move around, but I also want him facing how I want him facing. Okay. So let me get a good hold on that. Here we go. Flux. Clean the tip. I know you're getting sick of that, right? I'm not going to say it anymore. Maybe. A little bit of solder. Tack it right there. And my camera just shifted. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to cut these off right where they're at. I'm going to clean these up. Maybe do some more decorative to hide anything that I don't like that's showing. And then I'll show you how I attach a bale. Okay? Okay. Got that done to my liking. And... Now I'm going to do the bale. And I think I'm going to use, let me back back out, this 16 gauge tinned copper wire. I got this on Amazon, but you can go directly to wirejewelry.com and order it. You'll pay some shipping. But, um, I'm going to use my step bale making pliers and I kind of want it a little bit wider at the top. I was thinking about doing maybe a flat bale and like texture in it or whatever, but because it's already so fancy, I think I'm going to stick to just a simple um, bale. So I'm just going to use the biggest barrel on this and make kind of a horseshoe 
right? Like that. Cut that off. Let's see if that's gonna be kind of what I'm thinking. Actually, it's a little bigger than I want. So I'm gonna snip a couple millimeters off of here. That's better. Okay, now I'll show you what how I do this. I'm gonna use my third hand, but this kind, which is different from the, sorry, from the hard soldering. This is more for soft soldering because it's a big old uh, heat sink. Whereas the uh, third hands with the hard soldering is titanium, which is not a heat sink. Anyway gonna use this to put my little piece in here as best I can and either I'm gonna set it up on here or I'm going to hold it let me figure that out before I show you Okay, admittedly, guys, this is one of the hardest parts <laughs> in any of the applications. I don't care what you're working on, hard soldering, soft soldering, wire wrapping. The bales are always, for me, the hardest. And, of course, it's at the end of the project, and you've gotten everything just right, and now you have all this struggle going on. So... Take your time setting it up, whatever way works for you. I tried it laying down on front, on back. I tried turning it straight up. I tried holding it. I tried. So until you can get it nice and solid, and it could move on me as I'm doing this. And then remember, once you get that, you got to apply your, your flux. So just touching it with a brush could move everything. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It's not easy. I won't claim that it's easy. But here we go. And I already put some flux on it. And we'll see. It could move. And you guys, I have shakes. So I'm trying to be... I have to, like press down and brace myself so my shakes don't take over and sometimes they do but you saw I just barely touched that on there and waiting on this now and barely just to get it on and then I can mess with it a little bit more but you'll get used to doing the uh, tack soldering that helps if you can kind of get like just a quick dot on there just to hold things in place then you can come back and mess with it sometimes it still won't but it's worked out pretty well for me so i want to have a look at this before i go and take everything off is that centered it's kind of off center. Should be over this side a little bit more. So, yep. See what I mean? So what did I say? It needs to come over this way a little bit more. Let's see if I can do that without ruining the whole thing. But I'm keeping it real for you guys. Let's see if we can loosen this. Okay, what happened here? Oh, I have my iron turned way down. Hang on a minute. Sorry about that. 
I had to turn that up and then I decided I better get my washcloth to support this a little bit because I need to loosen this side. Come on. And normally, it, you know, I'd be able to get that off real easy. In fact, too easy. Maybe if I wasn't trying. Now, because there's layers on here, this is why the iron is acting like it's asleep when it's not. It just needs a minute to catch up. Okay, there, that one's off. There. Oops. Okay, let's try this again. And I am gonna hold this, I think, this time. And just moving it over a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. Let's do a little more flux or a lot. I am gonna hold it this time. And I wanted it over here. Okay, here we go. Try this again. Let's check it before we take everything off. back you out a little bit okay I'm happy with that all right let me just get it on the front okay turn this around let me just support this with this I just want to tack it from the front, too. And I did lose a couple of the decorative dots up here, but that's okay. I will um, redo them. Okay, so let me clean this up, guys. But that's how, what works for me. Okay, guys. Here it is. Woohoo! Oh, I like it. It's so pretty. So decorative. And I did try some different um, bales, like the pre made bales and stuff, but I really didn't like how they looked. They were just like almost overkill if you know what I mean so I just added three stainless steel jump rings and I think I like it a lot with a chain I think it's really pretty but you could always pair it and usually I sell my pieces with just um the cords because my prices are you know so inexpensive that I don't think people expect to have a, a high quality necklace or chain or whatever. I don't even offer them um, really on my Etsy store. I thought about it and in the first probably couple weeks I was giving people the option, but it's a pain. It's like, it's just another feature you have to offer and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, nah, I see plenty of people not even including a cord or a chain, or if they do, they're charging extra for it. So it's almost like this is a complimentary black cord. So it would be pretty either way. What do you guys think? Did you learn anything? <laughs> I did. I learned a lot. I learned something new with every piece just about. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed that and learned something. And... Um, 
check out the buy me a coffee and also my shop i have a wish list in there of course with a high ticket item a workbench or a, a jeweler's bench um that'd be awesome to have but um anyway i appreciate you guys so much just watching really but if you have a few bucks you can throw my way, that helps me buy more supplies. And, of course, always like and comment. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And for sure, share with your friends or family that might be interested in learning um, soft soldering, hard soldering. I, I work with uh, wire wrapping. I'm a mixed media person, for sure. So, anyway... Until next time, I'm working on some new stuff. Okay. Appreciate you. Bye now.